I love the topic in today's video. We're gonna go over whether you should be hiring a junior designer, a freelancer, or an outsourcing firm. If you don't know what an outsourcing firm is, stick around. This is what I do all day. I have an outsourcing firm and I want to tell you the main difference. The purpose is not to sell you my services, although, I mean, if you're a designer, you should be hiring us. But I want to go over a few differences between hiring a, a junior designer, a freelancer, and an outsourcing firm so that you can make the best decision for you and your business. Let's go. Before you make your first hire, you need to understand the difference between all three and what is right for your business right now in terms of budget, in terms of what you're trying to achieve, in terms of the hours that you're looking to delegate. Uh, so I, I'm going to go over each one individually and we're going to kind of compare them so that you can then decide, okay, yeah, this sounds like it's going to work more for me at this time. And then possibly another solution is going to be better for you six months down the line. Uh, but at least you can, I can help you make the best de decision for you right now. I have talked a lot about this. I've actually just recorded another video before this one about hiring a junior designer or a student. Those two kind of come like they go hand in hand. I'm, I mean, I'm very thankful that as a junior designer, I was able to find a job straight away after uni. And I'm very thankful for everything that I learned all the time and the energy that my mentors have spent on me to train me and teach me everything that I know. Um, but I guess, okay, there are a few things. I know that if you are starting out, your budget is going to be lower. You're still trying to understand um, what you're trying to do. You've been working on your own for a long time and you know that you have to get some help because you're overwhelmed, you're overworked, you're tired. You're kind of lacking this joy that you felt about doing design projects because now you're just doing so many different things that are not design. And you know you need the help if you want to keep your clients and sign more clients. So you usually the first decision that designers make is to try to find a student or a junior designer that they can potentially hire hourly or part-time, whatever it is. And because they have this thought of they're going to be cheaper, I can't afford a senior designer right now. And I can model them to do, to work in my company the way that I want them to work. Because if they have a lot of experience, they're going to be different, working a different way. And it's not going to be the way that I want them to work with me. And so you think that it's better to have someone with zero skills and zero experience because you can train them to work the same way that you are working in your business. And while I understand all these reasons, for me, there are a few problems uh, that I'm going to outline. The first one being that if you're hiring someone, it's because you're trying to free up time to be doing important tasks, like higher value tasks in your business. And if you hire someone with zero skills, zero experience, or like zero skills, I mean, a few skills that they need more experience in, then you're going to find yourself spending those hours training someone. So you're not doing the work, but you're spending the same amount of hours or actually more hours because you have to tell them how to do it on someone to train them and tell them how to do it, explain everything. And so you're not freeing up more time. If anything, you're going to waste more time because you have to train someone else without counting that they're going to do something and it's probably not going to be great. You're going to have to mark up the drawings, give it back to them. They're going to make more revisions. You're going to, and it's going to be a back and forth like this for a while. And so you're going to spend a lot of hours, like actually spend. So you're going to pay someone a lot of hours for doing a job that is not high quality. And so when you think about it, if you give a task to a junior designer, let's say they spend 10 hours on this task. So your, their hourly rate is $20. So it's $200 that you need to pay them for this task, considering like you're not elevating the quality at all. Like it's either going to be your quality because you're going to be, you know, doing the back and forth with them. Um, so it's either going to be the same quality as you would do, or it's going to be lower quality and you're just going to be like, yeah, it's good enough for now. If you're hiring someone with more experience, it might take them only two hours to complete that task because they already know how to do it. They don't need you to be looking over everything that they're doing. 
they're just going to do it. Especially if it's someone who's used to doing the same type of tasks, they're going to be really fast, really efficient. It's going to be top quality and it's going to take them two hours. Let's say that this um, like mid-level or senior designer, they're asking you $60 per hour. That's about what we charge. We charge $68 per hour. To designer that I know, my clients charge minimum $150 per hour to $200. But let's say like this designer costs them $60 per hour instead of $20 for the junior designer, but it only takes them two hours. It's $120 for completing a task that the junior designer did that you had to pay them for, uh, that you had to pay them $200 to do. Plus, I want you to remember that as the director, your time is not free. Your time is the most valuable and the most costly of everybody on your team, whether you're by yourself or you have two people, three people, your time is the most valuable. It's the, the high value like designer. You're the top value designer. So if you calculate those 10 hours of the junior designer, plus all the time that you spend to train them, check their work, mark up the drawings, tell them what they need to change, we're probably talking more than $400 whatever your hourly rate, and actually, I mean, $400, I'm really nice because if your hourly rate is $150 to $200, you probably spent more than two hours training them and, and marking up the drawings. Um, so on the long term, it just doesn't make sense in terms of budget. And that's why I built an outsourcing firm where you, you outsource what you need uh, to experts. You don't waste time. You don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, you know the work is getting done the way that you want it to get done or higher quality. So the junior designer, Kind of makes sense if you want someone to grow within your team. I will say, I don't know if this was your case, but I learned everything. Well, not everything, but I learned a lot from my two uh, bosses. It was a company where only four. As a junior designer, it was my first job. I stayed for, with them for three years. I learned so, so, so much. I will be forever grateful for everything that I learned. But once they trained me and they wasted all this time and energy training me, of course, I left for a better opportunity because I wanted exciting projects. I wanted to do restaurants. I wanted to see what was out there. I mean, I was 26. So the person that you think is going to grow with you is not going to grow with you. I had the case of a client who used to outsource to us and then she stopped. And after a few months, I asked her why. And she said, well, you know, I'm growing. So I hired two, I think at the time they were students. Um, they were doing like an internship and then they started working as junior, um, like junior designers for her. And she said, I want to train someone to work the same way. And at least, you know, they'll grow with me. And I feel like it's going to be a better fit long term. And guess what happened? After a year, she came back to me and she said, both of them left at the same time. I spent so much time training them and they both left with everything that I taught them, but they're not working for me anymore. So I'm back at, you know, either deciding what I'm, I'm wanting to do now. So I think it's something that you need to think about. I feel like for a bigger company who has uh, mid-level to senior designers already, you have a strong team, you can add a couple of junior designers because it's still good to have newbies. It's still, it's, it's a refreshing thing. They're going to have an outlook on things that's going to be different. They're going to bring a touch of fresh air to the office. But if you're by yourself and your main goal is to free up time to do other things like taking care of your clients, spending more time on your projects, uh, finding clients you need to think about strategy marketing everything that you need to do as a business owner then hiring a junior designer just doesn't make sense in terms of budget they could be much cheaper uh, initially like it could feel it can feel like they're cheaper but at the end of the day if they spend three times the amount of time it doesn't make sense for your business Okay, now we're moving into hiring a freelancer. So it's a little bit better because I will say normally you get a freelancer that's highly experienced in what you need them to be doing. Uh, but there are a few things that I myself didn't like about hiring freelancers that other clients have told me about as well. And it just makes sense. If you hire a freelancer, it's great because you don't have the overhead costs of hiring someone in-house, like an employee. Uh, you only pay them for the time that they're working for you, that they're spending on your projects, whether it's fixed price or hourly. But the thing is, if you don't hire them 40 hours per week, they're going to be working with other clients. And when you find yourself with a tight deadline, um, they might tell you, well, I'm not available right now because I have too much work. I can work on your project in two or three weeks. 
but the presentation is in like three days. How can you handle everything on your own? So not only the question of being available to you, like you basically have to adapt to their own schedule instead of them adapting to you, which it's, I mean, it's the way that it should be. As a business owner, you don't want to have to adapt to other people's schedule to do the work that you need to get done. You have too many things to think about uh, and you can't be adapting to someone's schedule. Like your presentations are on that day and not another day. And the other thing about a freelancer is that, as you know, we can't all be good at doing everything. We have a certain type of skill that we're good at, that is our zone of genius. And, and then the rest, we're either average or we're not good at all at it. So I was really good at drawing joinery details. I sucked at doing 3D renders. That's a reality. And I didn't want to spend more time learning it either because it's not something that I enjoy doing. So everybody's gonna have a zone of genius. And if you have only one freelancer uh, to help you, their skills, besides the availability, their skills are going to be limited. So you might not get the best quality out of like everything you need them to help you on, which is the other problem. However, when you hire an outsourcing firm, which is the model that we have, it means that you're effectively, you have an entire team available. You still do not have overhead costs because it's just like hiring, hiring a freelancer, except instead of having one, you have multiple you still get them to help as much or as little as you want. So it's up to you how much you want to delegate. So it's all the same benefits of hiring a freelancer. You only pay, pay for what you need. The, the difference though is because we're a team instead of just being one person, you get access to multiple skills. It means that whatever projects you have coming in, you know that your outsourcing team can handle it because we have designers who have different skills. And you know that they're always going to be available to you because we're a lot of people, a lot of people, we're like eight designers. Uh, and therefore, you're never going to be left alone with a tight deadline. And this makes the difference when you're super stressed because you have a presentation in three days and the client just sent you a list of things that need to get changed. You need to edit the drawings and the renders and the presentation. And you still have like three other projects to work on. There is no way that you can do it all on your own. So when you have access to a team who has been working on, the, on your projects, who knows the way that you work, your process for taking on uh, projects, the way that you like your drawings drawn, it doesn't make a difference whether it's one or five people because they're all going to get to know you. They're all going to get to understand what you like and what you don't like, what you expect from them. And the process is going to be much, much faster because you get higher quality from people who are not junior designers, but they're senior designers with over 15 years experience in their field. You're getting higher quality than what you would provide. And you're also getting like all the availability in the world that you need. And yeah, it, it does make the difference, of course, because I have an outsourcing firm. You're going to say that I'm, I'm going to lean into the outsourcing firm option, but I built the company because I was working as a designer by myself and this company like was built, created, and it grew out of my like obsession to fix my own issues as a solo designer. And for me, it's the best solution because of all these benefits. And I see some designers getting worried before they work with us that they're not going to get this um, feeling of getting to know people and of being able to bounce ideas off each other and and they've seen when they start working with us that this is not the case because we've got a management team that is very strong, that is very committed to supporting our clients the best way possible. They get on the calls. Um, we help them put together packages. We help them with their um, estimates, like workload estimates, so that they can build a strong scope of work and then provide a few proposal that makes sense in terms of pricing. We do free mentoring calls for our top clients. So, and we, we always create new resources to help them, whether it's to manage a project or understanding what tasks they should be delegating or how to write uh, um, an amazing brief in less time. So whatever it is, we're always aiming to support our clients as much as possible. So anyway, you have those three solutions. All of them have benefits and disadvantages. I don't see a lot of disadvantages to the outsourcing firm except that the biggest one is that we're not physically there with you in the office, but you can get on calls with us. You have the chat where we answer extremely fast. 
So it's about understanding what is going to be the best fit for you at this time in your business. And six months from now, it might change and that's okay. You can change your mind, but at least you have a basic understanding of the differences between the three. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have questions, as always, you can drop them in the comment box down below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.